Thank you, Mikhail. And um, some wonderful talks this morning. Mine is going to be extremely simple. Um, you have heard Barbara Rantner's talk, which has reminded you that there are certain patients who should have carotid endarterectomy. I'm not going to talk about stenting because we are doing a trial in asymptomatic patients, ACST2, <coughs> comparing stenting and surgery. And we have 2,700 patients. We want to have 3,600. So we will report that trial. Then we will have some evidence comparing the two in a couple of years' time. So um, in the meantime, what I want to do is show you uh, the results of a large meta-analysis, individual patient um, analysis, looking for a novel clinical risk score. And uh, we did this in Oxford to try to determine who are the higher risk asymptomatic patients. Now we know that one of the questions is about absolute risk nowadays with statins. And that, of course, is always impossible to answer what today's risk is. Um, I have to tell you that the most important cause of ischemic stroke for surgeons, of course, is carotid artery disease. And I remind you that Barbara said most of them have no warning symptoms. But the most important thing about asymptomatic disease is, it, is that it is a long-term stroke risk. So you don't really want to compare it with the three or five year risk from symptomatic disease you need to look at the 10-year risk. So randomized trials confirm that there's a net benefit of endarterectomy in asymptomatic patients, and that this will halve the long-term stroke risk. We looked at these three trials then, the Veterans Administration trial, ACAS, the American trial also, and ACST1. So these ran for 25 years, from 1983 to 2003. And the last follow-up in ACST1 was 2008. So although people consider they are old, they're not nearly as old as the symptomatic studies. So they are a lot more up-to-date, the last trial, than uh, some of the very old symptomatic ones. So we have 5,226 patients in this, and the median follow-up for the largest one of this is nine years. <clears throat> If we look at the 2,291 patients on triple therapy, so by that we mean blood pressure therapy, antiplatelet therapy, or antithrombotic, and statins, there are more patients on statins in these trials than you realize. <clears throat> so we've looked here at the, uh, what happens in terms of any stroke or perioperative death, and you see on the left-hand side the initial red line, which shows the perioperative risk in patients randomized to surgery, and then after that you see the risk at 5 and 10 years becomes lower compared to the blue line where the patients have not had intervention. So there is a clear difference at 5 years and a very clear difference still at 10 years that intervention with endarterectomy prevents stroke. On the right-hand side, any non-perioperative stroke means that they have had a successful endarterectomy. That's why you're starting at zero at the bottom, and then you are looking at what happens to the stroke incidence after that. And you see, again, it's very clear that if you have a successful endarterectomy at five years, there's an absolute risk reduction of 4%, and at 10 years, that is still maintained. It is about 6%. So <clears throat> these are people on statins during this study. So, there is uncertainty nowadays as to which asymptomatic patients will benefit most from a carotid intervention. So we tried to develop this risk score to look at people with high risk from these trials. We know that the risk in people who have not really got any additional risk factors but just carotid stenosis is possibly below 1% per year. So we individually analyzed this, and one-sixth of the data comes from the VA, one-third from ACAS, and half from ACST1. We restricted it to those with no endarterectomy prior to stroke, so these are medically managed patients. And um, we also uh, worked out the stroke risk ratios from Cox regression, and we included the most important factors then in a stroke risk score, so they had to have a relative reduction of more than 1.3. So if we look here at the association of these risk factors with stroke amongst the medically managed people, you can see that diabetes 
stands out as being a higher risk group. This is, none of these findings are surprising, but what is helpful is how useful they can be. There is a suggestion that male sex is, is, a, is a factor, but it doesn't reach the 1.3 criterion that we used. So the other factors like cholesterol, age, blood pressure, and history of ischemic heart disease are not the most important things for relative risk reduction with endarterectomy. So let us look at the three important risk factors that we also find. So not just the history of diabetes at the bottom with the uh, relative risk of 1.3, but the previous events. Now, a lot of these people had prior contralateral stroke, and quite a lot of them had endarterectomy for this. And quite a lot of them who had brain imaging had an infarct on either side. So they didn't have any recent symptoms for at least six months, but they may have had symptoms in the past. And you will see from this that the three most important risk factors here are stroke in, uh, a brain infarct on imaging, a prior contralateral event, and a history of diabetes. And those risk ratios we then put into a risk score. We gave this a very simple scoring system so that anybody can remember this in outpatients, okay? So if you have none of these, the risk score is nothing. If you have one, it's diabetes only. Prior cerebral ischemia, either from imaging or from history, is two, and if you have both of those, it's three. Please, uh, as it says also, this is not for publication. We're just uh, doing this at the moment. So here is the use of these based on the uh, zero risk factors as being the line of a stroke rate risk ratio of one. And you see diabetes is about one and a half times the risk of future stroke. Any evidence of prior cerebral ischemia, just over twice. And if you have both of these, about 2.4 times greater risk. How can you use this today when the claimed risk from stroke is falling in people with carotid stenosis? So we took the data from ACST1 because it is the most recent data. And if we said you have no risk factors and you have a 10-year stroke risk of 9%, well, your absolute gain from endarterectomy will be about 5% for those people. So that, that is, most of that gain is in the first five years. So you could say it's about 1% per year and then is maintained after that. If you take the people with diabetes, and their 10-year stroke risk in ACST1 was 13%, your absolute gain from endarterectomy will be 7%, so a little bit better. But if you take the group who have had any evidence of prior ischemia, they have a 10-year stroke risk of about 20%, which is really pretty high. And the absolute gain from endarterectomy in that group will be 10%. And actually, it doesn't mean that these trials contained mostly low-risk patients because a third of those trial participants had these, had these factors. <coughs> and these are people who are already taking statins, blood pressure, and antithrombotic treatment. So I'm not talking about the people who were not well-treated at the time medically. They were as well-treated as they could be at that time. So the implications for this are that statins do work because modern statin treatment will have stroke risk. But CEA also works. So with or without a statin, successful CEA will have stroke risk. The risk of stroke is double if you have a higher, if you have a prior history of cerebral ischemia. So those who have a higher risk score based on this extremely simple model should derive the greatest benefit from endarterectomy. And the conclusion is that these simple characteristics can be used to identify high stroke risk patients who might benefit most from endarterectomy, or since we're doing this trial comparing stenting and surgery, to be considered for the trial comparing endarterectomy and surgery. So I thank you very much and uh, look forward to questions. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I and for those who might be interested in surgery, I think this, I want to advertise our um, European Vascular Surgery Society meeting, which will be in lovely Valencia in September. Thank you. <laughs>